Hey guys, this is Rowan Veal from 38 South Boat Sales, just here at Royal Queensland Yacht Squadron. Just going to do a quick walkthrough video on uh, this Sunfast 3300 from Genoa. Uh, this is hull number 46, built in Poland. Um, it was launched about June 2021 and just been racing it for the last few months here, um, getting it all sorted. Just going to go through a few tweaks that we do here in Australia to just to show some little things that, that might make a little bit of difference when setting them up. Um, we have to add these uh, hooks here because of the Cat 2, Cat 1 regulations require a top lifeline across the transom. So yeah, this isn't good enough apparently, so we have to add that on top. Um, no real changes inside the cockpit. Um, just here we just make sure I've got all the tails for the fine tune the main sheet and the runner which we use this is the fine tune for the runner which we use quite a lot they're always tied off up here so you can grab them quickly. But yeah particularly the, the, the fine tune for the runner it needs to be used a lot. And um, I just tie the ends off for the foot shocks rather than using the cleat here. Just tie it back off itself so it just drops straight down whenever you need it rather than worrying about finding the right spot. Um, just added a couple of rope bags from Ronston up here a wind channel pocket which is very very handy. They're quite large so they hold the, uh, the big uh, Harkin. handles which makes it a lot easier and they're the factory fitted ones uh, no real changes to the runner setup from the factory you don't really do anything there it's just it works pretty good same with the main sheet um, here we've got the barber hall for the jib don't really make any changes to that uh, this is the in and out position for the, for the Genoa car up there so the car can run outboard. And the only change we really make here, there's a, there's a fair lead there on the deck that it's supposed to go through, but it's sort of running outside and it just runs outside just so it's got more travel. got a BNG electronics kit so on this side we have a, uh, a seven inch chart plotter and the autopilot controller and on the other side we have just a Triton four inch with another autopilot controller and I don't really change that just basically keep that on the settings that they are you can flick through pages here if you want to see tired and I'll steer and histogram for wind and stuff like that. Um, the uh, autopilot is fitted on this. is It's got a um, uh, setting in here, so you, when you flick into autopilot, it immediately goes into heading hold. Um, we just flick it over to mo mode. And it goes straight into wind mode so if you're going upwind or downwind it'll uh, it'll adjust or steer to either the parent wind angle upwind or the true wind angle downwind which is uh, indicated by here so if we just go up or down going up or down one degree just to change adjust us dramatically oops we're at our limit there for the rudder but in order to do this, it has a rudder reference unit that we've installed in the back. Um, uh, it's a good and cost effective way to set up the autopilot to steer to wind. Uh, you can get rid of that. Basically, leave it on charts most of the time. And, and these are the, most of the uh, information we have up, set up on here. We don't have any mast displays, don't really need it, and just, just sail the boat. 
tall towels or and how the boat feels. Um, a few little changes done up here. I've uh, got two two tack lines and two kite halyards. So tack two is just one to one for like the A1.5. Um, and and then the opposite, the, the matching halyard is over here for spin two, and then tack two is a two to one tack line for running the code zero, and we run the masthead A4 off that as well because it's furling, and that has a matching halyard here, spin one. Uh, main halyards here. Jeep Halyards here, uh, Reef 1 for the main, it's only got one reef, we're only racing this inshore. Um, we did upgrade this because it was currently an 8mm but it was a bit thin, it was slipping in the jammer so we put a slightly a thicker 8mm so that seems to hold a lot better. Um, we've got a second Jeep Halyard which also could be used as a pole topper if necessary for doing social sailing or things like that. Um, where you're pulling out a jib, but we're using that as a spare uh, jib halyard if it goes up the mast. And that here is the reef for the jib, so that just pulls the luff down to a new tack position. So you can reef it from the cockpit. Vangs here, both sides. And then a bit of cano here, which is four to one. Probably could be increased to six or eight to one. And the outhauls here, that's got plenty of purchase. Um, so that's all pretty good, no real changes needed there. Just a few little things we do. We have a mark in the kite halyard here, just to um, to know when we've reached full height on the kite halyard. And you can see here we've got a boom tent as well. Just the sun's pretty aggressive here in Brisbane so uh, it just keeps all the sun off and water off as well off the, off the cockpit. Um, go up on forward deck. You can see we just put a couple of pegs here to run the kite halyard aft once the kite's down so we can um, just keep it neat and clean. So there's the barber hall system. I think it's about eight to one on that. And same on the uh, the jib car up and down sheeting position. It's nice having this transverse car system so you can yeah, drop the car down if you want, if you're reaching. Um, just some elastics here, you can pull rope or whatever you want just to stop the jib from going overboard and an elastic to clip it in as well. Um, up here just lives the furler. It's a Carver 1.5 large, um, and which works really good. It's nice to have the larger furler just to make it a bit easier and also have the 8mm rope just so easier on your hands. So I just put a little thimble here because um, you can stand on the foredeck a lot easier rather than because the furler would angle downwards and this allows you to, gives it a bit of a fair lead to deflect back. So this can be switched either side. And then here, it's the jib reef. It's just on a thimble, just runs up the luff. Uh, these are really handy. Changing the rig, just the fast pins. Um, make quick changes on the water or on dock if you need to just boost the retention up if it's pretty windy um, that's the one-to-one -one tack line for the A1.5 and the two-to-one tack lines just lives back here clips into the furler and then there's a little poker at the front there to ensure that our kite sheets don't go now under the boat which has happened Go 
way back inside the boat. Let's do a little walkthrough downstairs. So no major changes down here from from stock. Um, the D Hummer. We obviously run that if the sails are wet, just run the hose back and down the sink. That makes a big difference. Must have. Um, sails live back there, jib, and there's the zeros there. So this has an alloy rig, so no water ballast, which would live there, but it's just got the um, soft storage bags, which are quite handy. Nav area with all the sheets, spare soft shackle, winch handles down here. Sorry, not winch handle, um, bilge pump handle. Port starboard aft cabin, the two kites. Battery switches there, and second battery switch and fuel. Just switch that off. Uh, CO2 sniffer. Uh, so galley area, little pantry bin, fridge, well insulated, which is good. Some safety gear, fire blanket. So on this side just has some spares, including some wooden bungs, emergency tiller, uh, bosun's chair, anchor, chain, warps all in there. Just some sail bags and a water bladder, which is 50 litres and my life jacket. And then the heads here with the holding tank and sink and access into the just the sealed locker and the anchor wells there. And that's about it. Anyway, so this boat's yeah, currently for sale and um, just wait for the next one to come in and just try and get a few more boats in the water, but uh, all in all, it's pretty good. Very happy with these boats actually. There's not much you need to change straight out of the factory, but you can go to town and make a number of changes if you like, but it's not that necessary. They're pretty good straight out of the box. Anyway, I'll uh, sign off and see you later.